sled drags first, yeah. sled sprints first, 10 meters. And then the power movement is not, we're not, we're cutting the unloaded sprint out. We're going to do the loaded sprint. The power movement's the box jump, the vertical yeah. displacement. Bilateral hip dominant, four or three, 202, trap bar deadlift, uh, low handles. Yep. Front rack stair pass will be 60 to 50. Yep. I'm just going to see, and then pellet press cardiac where I just hold you and slap you right. Can you go over and check the uh, switches, please? Meso nine, huh? weak. Meso nine, weak. Number two in the mesocycle, as we all know by now, we do a four week mesocycle. Fourth week's the deload, the fourth, oh my food's here. Fourth week's the deload. Um, fifth, oh mate, you didn't get any food, it's fine. Fourth week's the deload, fifth week's start a new phase. So we had the idea where we want to hit different parts, like anything with athletic development, it's hitting different parts of the force velocity curve. Um, as it gets closer, after this phase, uh, Shandor, what are we going to do after this phase? We're going to hit a, a accumulation. We're going to hit another accumulation block for two four. Watch out! Watch out! Two four two, two four week blocks with volume, so we can increase it because you um you you had a bod pod and you lost how much muscle? Two kilos. And can you explain to everyone the reason why you lost two kilos? Yeah. <laughs> now I've got a. Now my job, I work basically all day, every day. But explain your job, what you do. Yeah, it's active. So coaching um, high intensity group fitness classes because yeah. you just outputs massive all day. And, you and then the first enough. thing that comes is yeah, lack of sleep, lack of lack of food. Do you feel less powerful and less strong? No. Uh, did you, you notice that at all? Yeah, fine in the gym. But I think we're 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 due for that. That volume block yeah. again. Yeah. So he's kind of remember the loading we've been doing for a long time has been neural loading so what i mean by high intensity could be the weight or the speed lower volume and he hasn't really had much time to do a bit of volume work so we don't want to lose that muscle volume because we know it's correlated with strength because a bigger muscle potential be a stronger muscle so we're going to hit what he's going to do what are you also going to do in terms of nutrition yeah i'm going to go man. we're going to go we're going to go we're going to go last time i finished that volume block which is like four months of and we were hitting heavy numbers at the end of that volume in December. Yeah. I was 103 kilos, 9% body fat. So I had a 9% body fat? So you're only 101 now, 100. Yeah. And that, but that, 100 and a half. But it's always funny when people talk about that. In, he's pretty much like an athlete in season now because he's expending so many cal- I'm not, That's a great point, yeah. No, but yeah, I'm, I'm not, I'm, like, it's not, it's not 100% true, but Obviously what I'm trying to without say- Without the contact. Without the contact, what I'm trying to say, man, he's expending calories. Because I watched one of the sessions, like on Facebook, Man, you are, it's full on. He's grabbing, he's, he's up, he's picking up, man. And you'll clean up that gym as well, bro. Yeah, you do a lot. Mm. So anyway, what I'm trying to say is, we're gonna hit his next block after this, we're gonna really hit some volume. We're gonna hit some heavy numbers, we're gonna lift heavy weight, we're gonna lift it quick, we're gonna lift it high volume, okay? Um, we've been doing two movement, explosive movements to start. Session one, we do a heavy prowler push for five meters. We superset that. Contrast loading complex training with an unloaded sprint. So if everyone knows about post-activation potentiation, couple them together two biomechanically similar movements. The first one a strength movement, for his case, heavy prowler push to potentiate the glutes and the hamstrings and applying force on the ground. Then he rests 45 seconds and he does an unloaded sprint. So we take advantage of that post-activation potentiation, that neural stimulation, and then we simulate the speed. Second power movement is a, is a squat jump, vertical displacement. This time we're doing a sled sprint, 10 meters. So switches first, sled sprint, and then the power movement's a box jump. Then we go on our strength work. You ready, Shan? If you actually read the research out at the moment, we know heavy, sl heavy, sled, heavy sled sprints, heavy prowler pushes correlate highly with acceleration. It used to be a 10% rule of your body weight. But if you read, I, used, I read Boyle religiously, and Boyle talks about this, DeFranco talks about this, and you're reading research that it makes sense because we know acceleration is correlated by your ability to apply force on the ground relative strength. But So this is a good, you've got to think, what's the benefit for both of you? What's the benefit of, of a sled compared to a prowler? What does it add into it? A full arm action, full mechanics, compared to the prowler takes out the arm drive. I love this. One of my favourite. You watch how Shandler does it. Franco posted today, actually, about that. Sled drags. Okay. Come, 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 come. Probably a little bit too heavy. Probably a little bit too heavy. See how, see there, when he came up, do you see that how he came? Probably a little bit too, I'll take the 20 off, put the 10 off. I just didn't, maybe did it wrong. Do you want to try it again? Do you want to leave it on that? Yeah. Do you guys all see that? When he came up, do you see the first thing I said not to do, we did it. was too light. I sort of moved, you're just, just walking forward like that. Wasn't, but I don't, want, I don't want them to do that. That's what I don't want them to do is bound up. I always cue them to think about that horizontal displacement. So you want to, uh, he's he's on a pretty good age. Just getting used. You never. When was the last time you did this? Uh, we've, never, we've never done it. Uh, We're just getting used to it. But heavy sled, heavy sled sprints, heavy prowler pushes. I love because it teaches you up to apply force on the ground during the specific motor pattern of leg drive, muscle group, motor pattern, time and coordination. So integrates it all. Overloads. When you're ready, Shan, push. We want to push. 
Yeah, that's it. Yeah, now, Cody, Cody, just feel the difference there. Yeah. Yeah, that's a lot better. The rest of the bits, please. Okay, very good. Not much. Yeah, back, 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 and I can show you a demonstration with him actually. What I want you to do is open your stance, feet shoulder to up, wide up. I want you to do a counter movement. A counter movement, you get a pre stretch. So it's a slight dip. I want you to jump and land properly. So off you go, dip and jump, high as you can. Now I want you to bring your feet underneath your hips. Now this time I want you to dip and jump, see if you get more height. Makes sense, which one do you get more height? Feet under, we call it ground based power. Greater force you to apply on the ground, high you're going to jump, quick you're going to run. So we have our feet under the hips. I showed you a practical example right there. Now what he's going to do, he's going to come up, feed it for the part. You're going to do, you're going to do, oh geez, you're going to do five of these to start. The dip's critical, the dip's critical because we're going to get that pre so we're here, dip. He's going to practice that ten times. Up, dip, quick dip, okay? Over here, practice the dip first. Break the dip, then we're going to do the jump. Dip first. Yep, so you're going to go, balls of your feet, quick dip. Quick, yep, nice, go again. Dip, good, and again. Dip, good, now we're going to add it all together. So he's going to go a dip and a jump now. When he jumps, especially with the, this is low for him, but you want to make sure it's a maximum effort every time. So you don't just want to just jump to the box, you want to make sure it's a maximum effort. That's the whole idea about developing power. So he's going to try and drop in the middle of the box, give it a maximum effort and land. Same thing, we're going to practice landing as well. When he jumps off, single leg off, land proper hips, flex, knees, flex, ankles, flex, knees out, all right? Let's go. You know, all together, dip and a jump, make it a maximum effort, midline the box. Dip and jump. So you can see that now, nice, good landing, land properly, drop down, land properly. Land. Good, soft landing knees out. A few ways you can overload a box jump. There's many ways you can do it. You can do single leg. You can increase the box height. You can actually do a static jump with no stretch shorts, uh, stretch reflex. What I mean by that is you're not getting a pre-stretch. You pause on the box, you hold for three seconds, you dissipate that stretch reflex and you drive up. So that's what we call maximum shortening velocity. Um, that's a lot harder because you're not using your stretch reflex. You're not using that impulse, that elasticity, okay? Um, the best way I believe you can overload it is because um, is actually through um, weight. Because what, what a lot of the time is, guys aren't improving their vertical jump, they're just getting your hips high, their legs high like that, so they're actually not improving their vertical jump at all. So I like to add weight as much as possible, they're getting off the ground and landing on the box. Get on the box! Well, I'm not going to tell you again, get on the fucking box every fucking time. You want to fucking accept me, you're get on the fucking box. You're better than that, come on. Nice, better, good. Let's see what I expect of you. One more, give him one more. It's good to get it, no, uh, yeah. understand where they are loaded. For sure. Just to see where he's loaded. Yeah. He, he hasn't done this before, so there's gonna be a skill to it, I understand. It's really the first time you've jumped in this whole periodization. No, yep. no, no, it hasn't, dickhead. Don't be smart, it hasn't. Because you haven't, then what did you do? Like, I don't yeah. remember, like. He's done, he's done jumping before. What have I done? Not episodes. So a keg toss, a keg toss and a vertical jump movement. Keg toss, not vertical jump, jump one movement. One session. One session, did we? Uh, Olympic lifting's not a vertical jumping movement, is it? You're old, he has got no idea. Squat jumps as well. <laughs> let's go, um, a trap bar deadlift, let's go. He knows, he knows I'm right, he's backtracking now, but I've won this argument. Yeah. Different area with the force velocity curve. Yeah, I know it's different, but it's still a vertical jumping pattern of force vector. He's talking about unloaded. Oh. Yes. Nice. In. Two. Yes. Hips. Good. Three. Come on, get up! Quickly going on to that point as well, you've got four minutes here. Um, going on to that point, it's always interesting to see that the top of the game get trained by these guys and it's like the most gimmicky shit that you could ever see. And it's like, well, those guys, those elite athletes like LeBron aren't there because they're trained. They're there because they were already good at the sport. They're very good at the sport. They've got a high level of achievement. They can read the play. They're just freaks of the sport. They're not there because of that type of training. And people need to start understanding that, which is a big deal because people see a gun like LeBron. Oh, this guy trains LeBron. He must be very good. No, doesn't mean shit. Okay, just because he trains LeBron doesn't mean shit. It's just the fact that LeBron is a freak basketball player. Or example is the, the, the altitude mask. Oh, just because Anthony Joshua wears one, that means it must work. No, he gets paid a lot of money to fucking promote that. Always remember there's a reason why people do things in life, and one of the main reasons is the money. Press, lock, good, two. Press, 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 press. One more. 
Drake, tighten up. Press, press. I have a question, Chandler. Some people need to really focus yeah, before they're set. They need to get in a zone. You're lifting heavy weight. Yeah. And like Christian can be like, you can be silly sometimes, so we can like lose focus and like you can laugh five seconds before a rep, a heavy rep. Yeah. How do you switch that focus off to just like go? I don't know. I think I just have confidence in my technique. Like anything. <clears throat> anything you do, whether it's playing sport, training, doing a certain move, if you have confidence in your preparation, you know what you're doing. I think you just nail it. Whereas if 200 was some daunting weight for me, mm. something I hadn't done, you're not going to be laughing, joking, and then go into it. But I know that I'm going to set up, get in the right position, and then snap it up. So I think that's why. Pretty excited though, Sydney, coming up very soon, the 28th of May. Get your tickets. This is to see our comedic show, the Sandal Earl and the Christian Woodford you, show. You'll be under strict guidelines, mate. The Sandal Earl and the Christian Woodford show. Okay, very excited to go up there and um no you'll be you'll be switched on like as soon as you walk in there yeah no no we'll be switched on we good fun you know um if you've ever been to a workshop that i have have run it has been interesting i do i do you know i'm not i'm, I'm not always that serious i try and be a bit of serious bit of fun and you know i'm bringing him up now so it should be good fun that the good thing for everyone actually going that you get to not only hear the coach's view, but you get to hear a guy who's actually done it for nine months with me. So you can hear his opinion. Not, not many guys do that. They'll just talk about their side, they won't talk about the athlete side. So if you're an athlete, you're a coach, you're a parent, whatever you are, come Camber Down Fitness. Alex will chuck the link down there. Please come, we're really, really excited. You know, and just uh, really talk about um, athlete development. And with this man, I mean, it's his, it's your hometown, brother. So it's, it's, a, it's a rugby league dominated city compared to here where it's AFL. So he can walk around here and not be noticed. And up there, I'm sure he's a celebrity. So. And <laughs> I'm sure you will. So you've envisioned that? You envision what it would be like to get your first try? Have you thought about yeah, that? Yeah. They're probably a bit more spectacular in my visions. Than yeah, it's no. Gonna they be. always. <laughs> they always are. It's the best. Kilos when I did my knee. Yeah. Come back the next year in that team at 83. Jesus. Crouched up to the gym. There was a gym up the top of the hill. What a year. Do you think that was one of the biggest years for your development? Yeah, it got me progressive. Those, those are the days where, like, you just touch weights and you grow. I never really felt those days. <laughs> I'll, I'll be honest. <laughs> What? Can you explain the? Can you explain the benefit of having your foot up on the box yeah, compared to I, compared to bringing it down? I would have thought you should go. So yeah, reset it from the ground up, right? Push through the box. Listen, listen. You re either way, you're applying force to the ground. If you yeah. do it that way or you do it the other way. So what's the difference? Listen, you can use once again. It's exactly like a, uh, a squat to box or a box squat. It's just a variance. Okay, so next phase to, to vary it, he can even do one where his leg comes off, then drives up. So you don't know the difference? No, I do know the difference. No, in terms of what, what it's a I don't know, muscle activation pattern, uh, uh, proprioception. Uh, well, it's just, I see it as variance. Okay. You'd have to, uh, that's all I see it as a variance because either way, right? Let's say he does this, right? So he's talking about this and then driving in the ground. I'm talking about this one here. Okay. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm saying I'm different. Which one are you using that? I suppose using the momentum, this is a bit it's probably This is probably a little bit harder because you're yeah. not using the momentum compared to the one. So remember always with, with, with the stuff I do with the front squat, where I coach you on a, uh, a pause before we do a touch and go because we know one, hold. Hold it. Two. Oh. Three. No, but that's what I have to do. Show me how to tackle again. Four. Five. One more. Six. Good. Six. Yes. He's actually so. He, he's actually that strong. He's so strong. Oh, mate, the position he can hold is very good. Like I was, I was trying. Six. Press. Oh. oh, oh. <laughs> That's the takedown. Oh man. He's done that twice now. Nutmeg. He's gonna cop this. I'm gonna get it. Yeah, you said that last time, the no, time before. I'll be... No, don't, don't, I'm going to get it back. Mate, you're going to, oh, mate, I'm going to get you good, you're going to be down for 10 minutes, I can't wait. No, you're not. You, you don't think so? You've said it for the last eight weeks. Mate, you have to wait for your perfect opportunity. You have to understand, him. I've edited every video. I know. I'm going to get him back.
Phil talk, mate. Phil talk. If you want to, you got actually beat him up by the actual Try. I think you could. Can I just? I think you could. Don't! 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 You got so scared. I thought I heard back. I didn't even think about it. I heard back. I reckon he wouldn't be able to last. Like, if I were running around in football, he'd be able to last. Where would you run me around? In what world? He's all slow. Mate, if I ran you around the right and we're in a corner, you'd, you'd blow up here, yeah, you don't have condition. You, would, you wouldn't be able to run me around. You don't have an issue? Fair enough. If we're playing AFL right, yeah. and it was me and yeah. you, I'd back my ability every time. Play rugby, you win. Bands up in August, let's go play what force AFL on you, Mark, maybe. Alright, oh, fine, I'll do it no. then. Done. No. There's a little good video for you, Alex. People can watch that there. Mate, I'm happy to do it, mate. I still reckon I'd be young. People give me a thing, you beat me in rugby, I beat football, get over it. And you can't hack that. I, I can read the play better than you never play. I'll beat you. You can have it my F45 gym if you can run me around. Alright, oh, fine. <laughs> get the contract! Get the contract! Jared, we're at a gym now. And I'm the owner of Marabin. No, I love this gym. <laughs> you work for me. No, you know I love this. You can own Casey. We're going to call it Owen. We're going to call it Marabin. Earl Sports Science Consulting. You're always going to do it. Oi, oh, hold on a second, hold on a second, just stop. I will say to everyone to this, when he's up at 6am, he has to let the whole world know. And you know he's up at 6am because he tells the whole world about it. See, I knew it. Every time. Post? What? When was the last post? I know you've done it. You always do it. You put it on your Snapchat. Oh, I'm up at 5 o'clock. No, up at 5 o'clock. And everyone, I'm like, mate, this guy's an idiot. I, clean my, I vacuum my gym every night. So, so do I, mate. Get over it. I vacuum. I, I do the same thing, mate. <laughs> you don't. No, you don't. Yes, I do, mate. Why do you? Don't bring up your my own house. Your own house. Yeah, she does actually. So what? I pay her, mate. Who gives a fuck? No, you don't. No, I don't at all. <laughs> Shut up! You're not gonna hear. Getting here earlier. You know that um, Sesame Street character, the <laughs> the one with the, the Dracula one. <laughs> <laughs>